Hey everyone, I'm Isaac and I hope your week was awesome. If you're brand new here, thanks for joining us. Our mission is that you would get to know God personally and that you'd know that you've been created on purpose and for a purpose. Our hope is that you would be empowered to discover and live out the life that God has fully intended you to live. If you're tuning in online, jump in on the chat and say hi. And while you're there, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you can know when we go live. If you need prayer or want to be connected, just text the number on the screen. To everyone here in person, you can find our welcome card in the seat pocket in front of you. If you're here for the first time, bring your welcome card out to the Connect Center right after service and we'll give you a free Starbucks gift card. In the same seat pocket, you'll also find a prayer and praise report card. We want to know how to pray for you and we'd love to celebrate with you as well. Fill those out and drop them in the offering bucket at the end of service or bring them out to the Connect Center. If you're looking for someone to pray with you today, we always have our prayer team near the stage at the end of every service ready to pray with anyone in need. So if you've been coming here a while, you may have heard us talk about Growth Track. If you want to know more about our church or figure out how you can get more connected here, Growth Track is the next step for you. It's the first two Sundays of the month at 9.15 a.m., so mark it in your calendars and make a plan to join us. We will be starting our At The Movies series in August. Like Jesus used storytelling to depict the kingdom of God for those around him, during At The Movies, we use contemporary films as modern day parables to share the gospel in a different and creative way. It's the perfect time to invite your friends and family to church with you who may be hesitant or afraid to attend a regular church service. We have invite tickets by the door for an easy way for you to invite someone. For our online fam, At The Movies is a purely in-person experience. If you're on island, join us on campus so you don't miss out. But if you are unable to be with us on campus, rest assured, our team has prayerfully picked four weeks of amazing messages to share with you folks. This month, we will not be having our regular baptism weekend because we will be having Beach Bash next month at Kalama Beach Club. Beach Bash will be on August 14th, where we will be giving out bentos, have shave ice, fun for the whole family, and we will celebrate everyone who is choosing to get baptized. It is going to be a party, so save the date and make a plan to join us. If you are interested in being a part of our volunteer team for the Beach Bash, please come out to the Connect Center after service. If you missed anything, just text the number on the screen or come find us in the courtyard after service. And with that, get out your notes and let's welcome Pastor Rob to the stage. Love it, boy. So good. Okay. Try. Can we hear me? Now. Off and on. Hello again. How are you doing? Can we go that way? Uh, Never mind. Me and this mic, they, we don't really get along. Let me turn this one off first. So how's everybody doing while I get this figured out? Doing good? Seeing some great faces around here, some people I haven't seen in a while. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? So good to be with you. Hey, were you a part, your kids were, they a part of our Anchor Kids Fun Time this week? Anybody, anybody bring their kids here? I want to, before we get started... I want to do a big time shout out. Put that picture of our leadership team there. That is, that is our team. So I see some of the people over here. You guys were amazing. The reason I want to do this because I'm going to try to keep it together here. I could lose it really quickly because, see, that's that's the future. That's the future of Anchor Church. That is the assurance that we will be an amazing church for generations to come where people can come on this campus and experience Jesus in a powerful way. These kids that they over, it was, what, 70 kids? How many kids, Hope? Like 75 kids? There's a lot of kids, 75 or so, I think, came up here for our Anchors uh, Fun Time, had an amazing week. But what I wanted to say is, 
this church is in a really good place because we have some amazing people who are going to take, when, when I'm long gone, the next generation's coming in here, they're going to do a phenomenal job. So can we just give it a big time shout out to those people? Some of them are in the room right now. It's so good. By the way, again, at the movie starts in two weeks. That ticket's on their seat. We already figured you're coming. Give that to someone. I promise you they're never going to see the gospel presented in this way at, at the movies uh, coming up in two weeks. And also, what we're going to start doing at the end of the month, the last Friday of the month, what happens to be next Friday, our worship team is going to do an extended time of worship. So get ready for that. If you feel like hanging out with us afterwards and going a little deeper into our worship experience, we'd love to have you. If you have to go get something to eat or go about your night, no big deal. It's just going to be a relaxed time of worship. So that's going to start next Friday night. So plan accordingly. Okay, you ready to get in the word? Also, I want to just look in the camera and just welcome our online family, our amazing anchor family. So good. Wherever you might be checking in today, thank you for joining us. Hope you are doing well. And also, just a big shout out to the folks in the courtyard eating dinner right now. How many wish they were eating dinner? So, just a hand, hands up. What was like the, the top thing to eat tonight? I saw some sandwiches. Who had the sandwiches? A lot of people did. Reuben. Anybody had the Thai food? That was good, too. I see a lot of people. So make sure you support these guys who are on the campus because we want them to, you know, we, we're, we're thankful they're up here. So make sure that you kind of plan your Fridays and hang out with us and, and enjoy the food. Okay, now let's get in the Word. Ready to do that? Ready to do that? I'm excited about this. I, these next two weeks, I, I've, been, I've been thinking about this and praying into the next two weeks' messages. And I've entitled the, the next two weeks as kind of a, this is, this is where I've landed. We're, we're worshiping a God, the God of the impossible. The God of the impossible. And, and, and I know every time, every, every time we have services here, there's always new people here. And welcome, you come to a very friendly and loving church. But here, I just need you to know what my passion is. My passion that's deep within me is that you would experience God in a powerful way. That literally that you're, you would experience his presence and his peace and his power in your life. Here's how I say it, that your faith every day would grow. You know, it, anybody love exercising in here? Wait, I better put, better put my hand down. <laughs> I actually, this week, I actually, one day, one day I started, I, you know, I, I golf on Fridays and I was feeling a little tight and all that, so I figured I better stretch and exercise you know, you know, if you haven't done that a while and then you do it, you know what happens the next day? Oh, was it worth it? I was thinking probably no. Just kidding. We, all, we should all be exercising. But here's the deal. What I'm trying to say is we should always be exercising our faith. And what I mean by that is that every day your trust and your love and your passion for God would grow. Amen. That our lives would be surrendered to him. King David in the Bible, if you're new to the Bible, if you're new to, to, to church, he's of the David and Goliath fame. Well, he became the king. He was the king of the, he was the, king of the, of the country. He was also the, in the, uh, fighting in the army, leading the armies. He lived an incredible life of people trying to kill him. And also, you know that he wasn't a perfect guy. He did a lot of crazy things. But along the way, his passion for God. In fact, the word says in 1 Samuel that he was a man after God's own heart. That's what I want to be. And that's what I want you to be. Said about you, said about me, that you would easily say, this is a man after God's heart, own heart. This is a woman after God's own heart. How many want to be there? In the word, in the word. And I, if you're taking notes with me or you're on our app, they put, the, the, they put this verses out there because I'd like you to, just, if you have our notes right now, just kind of tuck them away because this verse, this verse in Psalm 34 kind of really sums up where I'd love to take this church this year. And what I mean by that is I'd love you to experience what David writes here. Here's a man in passionately love with Jesus. And it says this in, in uh, Psalm 34, verse three, it says, come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let me say it this way. Come, let us live our passion for God out loud. Come, let us exalt his name together. I pray that the Lord, 
I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. Those who look for him for help will find radiant joy. Love that. No shadow of shame will darken their face. It says, in my desperation, I prayed, and the Lord listened. He saved me from all my troubles. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joy of those who take refuge in him. Psalm 34. I'd love you to make that a part of your prayer. Because so, what David is saying here is, I am passionately in love with God. And that's what I, that, if, you're, if you're new here and you want to know how I roll, that is what my, my passion is. Our, my mission is that all the Anchor family would be deeply in love with Jesus. Because what happens in that? When we're there, we become, to, we become, we radiate God's glory in our life, like, like David wrote. That people see us, they see a reflection of Jesus in us. And our, we, every day as our faith grows, we get to look more and more like Jesus. In fact, the word says that we're made in God's image. And what radiates from us when we're, when we're experiencing the presence of God is what radiates from us is a love. That love is a natural, it naturally comes out of us. I say it like this, love for us who are living our faith out loud is our secret weapon. It's our secret weapon. Because when I talk about living our faith out loud, it, that's what I mean. That we, what would come out of us is that we would love. That we'd be full of compassion. Pastor Tom talked about it last week. That we'd be salt and light into this world. That there's no way that when we see somebody in our orbit, in our workplace, in our, in our neighborhood, and in our family that needed help, it would be, we would instantly move to figure out how we can partner to make them and their life better than ever. Do I get an amen? amen. But that we'd be willing to step out in faith to make sure that we're touching people in our lives and that we'd be generous. The word over and over talks about generosity. That we'd be generous with our time and our talent and our resources. Because some of those folks who need our help are going to need some resources along the way. Do I get an amen? amen. That's what we And those are all amazing parts of how God would want us to live our life. But here's what I really want to sow into the next two weeks. Because I believe a core value of Jesus in our lives is this. That we would believe that God is the God of the impossible. Amen. All of us going through life need God in a powerful way. And sometimes there's gonna be times in our life that we don't even see any way out of it. But we have to know, we have to know that he wants to do something in our life. And when I talk about that we would believe it, I'm talking about, of course, when I say that God's the God of the impossible, everyone would say intellectually right now in this room, the vast majority of us would say, I believe that. But I'm talking about here. I'm talking about the core of who we are. Like every decision we make, every issue we come across, everything that's happening in our life, we literally, absolutely, deep down inside is, I don't see how this is going to work out, God, but I know you will, and I'm going to follow you and trust you and have the faith and belief in you. Do I get a good amen? amen. One of my favorite verses, and if you've been around here a while, you know it's in Ephesians 3. It says this. In the, in the New Living Translation. Now all glory to God. All glory to God. Who is able through his mighty power at work within us. To accomplish infinitely more than we could ever dare, dream, ask, or think. You know what I just read? By the power of God working through us. God can do the impossible in us. And around us. And through us. I like what it says in the message version. Let me read the message version. Eugene Prieston writes it, because the message version is a paraphrase, but it's so descriptive sometimes. And in this verse, it is. It says what it says in the message version, Ephesians 3. It says this, God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. He does this not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his spirit deeply and gently within us. Amen. Powerful. So the question is, do we actually believe that? 
not intellectually, but I was, I said, right here. Like, is it a core driver of your life? Because I believe when we look in the word today and next week, God would want us to know that he is the God of the impossible. We live in a culture today, humanistic for sure, a worldview. If you, if you can see it, if you can taste it, if you can smell it, then I believe it. And in that culture that we live in today, which we fall into, if seeing is believing, that's how we live life. If you live with that worldview, and many people on this planet do, that means that there is no room for the impossible, that everything is coincidences, everything is luck along the way. But if you're a believer in Jesus like I am, and I'm most of these people, most of us in this room are, then we have to believe God is a God of miracles. We have to believe that. There is no such things as coincidences. And in any way, in any way, God wants to do something in our lives so powerful. Because, you know, here's what I want to say this way. God wants us to see the wonder in him and everything that he does in our life. Hear me, I want to say that again. God wants us to experience his wonder in our life when every time we can, whatever goes on in our life, the wonder of God is all around us. But sometimes we're racing through life so quickly. In fact, most of the time, we don't even stop to realize what God's doing around us. And when we realize what he's doing around us, he's literally doing miraculous things. You know, a miracle is when God's involved in whatever that is. That's a miracle. I mean, I, I looked it up in Webster's. Here's what it says in Webster's. It's very interesting. It says this. I love it, actually. A surprising and welcome event that, was, that is not explainable by nature or science. So therefore, consider to be a work of a divine God. Yes, it is. 100%. In fact, in this book right here, if you really love this book, and I do, and I hope you do too, it's really a book of miracles in everyone's life. He, God's saying, and, it, and by the way, the, the Bible has finished, re, been written, but if he kept reading, writing it, and I believe he is right now, I believe in he's still writing our history. When we get to heaven, it, he's writing it. Do you know that? He's writing our history. If they were still writing volumes of the Bible, we would be in it. It takes, though, to really experience the miracle and the wonder and the impossible of God. We have a part to play in that. Do you know what that is? Faith. It takes faith. In Hebrews... Consider the faith chapter, Hebrews 11. If you, don't, if you haven't read that chapter before, make sure you do. It's considered the faith chapter. It's actually the, the theme of, the, of, uh, of chapter 11 in Hebrews is really about ordinary people experiencing God and then seeing the impossible in their life. It says this in Hebrews 1. It says this, and I'm going to read it in the message version. A fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, is a firm foundation under, every, under everything that makes life worth living. And See, what he's saying here is, when we truly trust God with our lives, truly trust God with our lives, we take the steering wheel off the, up the, up the, the control of our life, and we say, Lord, you take it. We're going to go th goes together. Because most of us, we have to have control. Pastor Guy, a couple weeks ago, said this. We, are, we have tons of faith in, in God. We trust him emphatically as long as we have control. I don't know about you, but that touched me deeply when he said that. Because he, because you know what that really means? You have control. And God says, take your hands off the steering wheel of life and allow me in. It goes on to say this. It's our, it's our handle on what we can't see. The, the act of faith 
It's what distinguishes our ancestors and set them apart above the crowd. And here's what I'm trying to say here, is when we really have faith, when we really trust God, we live our faith out loud. We do. We're able to live our self life out loud. Think of Noah. In this chapter, in Hebrews 11, Noah's in there as an example. There's many great examples of people with faith. Ordinary people. Noah, if you know the story, he was an ordinary guy. He lived in the desert. Like he never even knew what a boat was. The closest body of water was miles and miles, and it was just rivers. The Euphrates rivers. He didn't know what a boat was. He's in the middle of the desert, and God says, Hey, Noah, I'm going to ask you something. Would you consider building a boat? Like, it's not just any boat. Like a big boat. Now, Noah's got to be thinking, That's impossible. That's impossible. But guess what Noah says? If you tell me to, I'll do it. If you tell me to, I'll do it. It goes on to say this in Hebrews. It says, by faith, we see the world was called into existence by God's word. What we see created by what we don't see. In other words, God created this out of, out of something that we couldn't possibly understand. But by faith, we believe it. In fact, in verse 6, it says this. It's impossible to please God without faith. Anybody who wants to come to him must believe God exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. When it says rewards, and then what, I'm, what I want you to understand is what he's talking about is that we would see the wonder of God, that we would see the impossible. Think of Mary. Think of Mary. An angel comes to her and says, hey, Mary. By the way, if you understand the story in Luke 1, she even says, dazed and confused and upset with the angel. What the heck are you doing here? Like, you scared the daylights out of me. And then the angel tells her, hey, by the way, I, I need to, the Lord's found favor with you. I, you're going to have a son. And, and Mary goes, what? <laughs> Do you not know I'm a virgin? I've never been with any. How is that possible? And then the angel says, but with God, all things are possible. And then Mary says, actually, she says it this in Luke 1, 37. It says, Not, she understood, and, and the Lord opened her eyes to this reality, and she goes this, nothing's impossible for God. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Wouldn't, wouldn't you want that said about you? Like, nothing's impossible. Whatever you want. Like, here's the deal. Here's what I pray every day, and I hope you pray. Lord, your will be done today, not mine. Like, your will be done, Lord. That's what Mary's saying here. Your will will be done. And guess what? God's will for you is far better than your will for yourself. You got to know that. So if you're taking notes with me, God is a God of making mountains move. God moves mountains. This is a crazy verse in the Bible, talking about faith, because it takes faith to see the impossible. It's an amazing verse. It's found in Matthew 17. It says this, in front of the mountain, a large group of, a large crowd was waiting for him, and a man came to him and knelt down before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He's had seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls in the fire and into water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. And Jesus said to this, you faithless, corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here. And then Jesus rebuked the demon, and the boy was good. What, what he's saying here to his disciples is what, what, pastor, what pastor Guy says. We all have faith as long as we have control. And his, all of a sudden, guaranteed, guaranteed, his disciples saw the boy and saw all that was going on. Even though God had given them the authority to heal in his name, they came to this boy and they had to have thought, of, thought to themselves, no, this one's impossible. Because as soon as they said that to themselves and thought, no, I can't do that, guess what? It didn't happen. 
Are you hearing me? See, it goes on to say this. You didn't have enough faith, he told his disciples. You didn't have enough faith. I tell you the truth. All you need is have enough faith of a mustard seed, a small mustard seed. And then you can say to the mountain, move here or there. And it will move because nothing is impossible. Nothing's impossible. But you need to have faith. By the way, if you've ever seen a mustard seed, and somebody sent me one a while back when I was preaching a couple of years ago, a mustard seed, you could go like this and it would be dust in your fingers. It is that small. But when you, let, when you just let it grow, don't cut it. Let it grow, let it grow, let it grow. This is what it turns into. Like one mustard tree. Can, it's, it's bad resolution, but do you see how big that tree is? All you need to have the faith that small, but trust God along the way, and he will show himself faithful along the way, and all of a sudden your faith will grow and you can, the word says, you can move mountains. Amen. Move mountains with your faith. Back in 1988, I was on staff, and we were looking for a place to have, a, have our church so that we wouldn't have to, we were in a rented facility. Every Friday we had to set up. Every Sunday we had to break it down. We did that week after week after week. And Pastor Ralph, the founding pastor of the church, and the church board back in those days when I set out to find a piece of property or a building, anything that we could call our own. And one of the realtors uh, and that was a part of this project, Bob, one day a piece of property came across his desk, this one. And it said that the, it's a leasehold land from the, from the Father of the Sacred Heart. The developer, the Castle Hill subdivision, was trying to build their, continue the, the division, subdivision up here, but they were turned down from the city to get it rezoned. So they put the land back on the market because they couldn't use it. It came across their death. And almost sight unseen, we took over that lease. We came up here. Back, in fact, this is what it looked like back then. See all the trees? It was a mountain with a forest. Line. By the way, just for the record, can you see that they're building the H3 freeway back there? Yeah. It was a mountain with a forest on it. In fact, only the fittest people could walk from the bottom to the top of that hill without kind of putting, we finally put switchbacks in as we brought people onto the property to show them that what we leased. Now, I, I, I was in construction back then, so... Pastor Ralph goes, hey, Rob, can you figure out how we can get up on that property? Now, I have no idea how to develop a piece of land. I can bend a nail like the best carpenter. But I, so somebody in the church knew a developer, a major developer, so he got me an appointment with the guy. So the developer did a little, little homework on our land, and I went and met with him. So I go into his office, say, hey, you know, how, do, how, do we, how should we develop this land? How, what, what can we do? And he said this, and I'm going to say it verbatim. Even though this was many years ago, I, for, I won't forget this. He told me, you need to run as fast and as far as you can away from that piece of property. Because you'll never develop that land. It needs way too, the drainage he, he happened to know that the drainage issue on the, the, the watershed coming down on this property, what, you cannot afford it. You'll never get the permission. It's going to be impossible to do. Right after that, he set me up with his uh, uh, engineer, his civil engineer. So I went and talked to a gentleman, Cal Kim. I go to him. Cal, he'd done some homework on the land. He goes, oh, that gentleman was right. The drainage the amount of permits you would need. He goes, if I, if I needed only four or five permits, I would probably question if I would take this project. You need 12 permits. It's not going to happen. Run away from this. Don't, let your, don't, don't waste your congregation's money. And I remember driving home from that meeting going, so you say there's a chance. <laughs> I mean this. I'm, I'm dead serious. Because why did I know? What did I know? I know God is the God of the impossible. Amen. I know that. 
So when I sit here today and tell you that God is the God of the impossible, I need it, I believe it with every fiber of my being. Because guess what? You drove up on this land today. We are writing a book called When God Moved a Mountain. That is true. It'll, the rest of it, as Lori says, it'll be in the book. Because I can tell you miracles. That's not my point. I'm not trying to tell you all the miracles that happened up here. But what I am telling you is God's the God of the impossible. Back in 2019, before COVID, I had a, a Saturday morning men's, mini, men's uh, connect group. By the way, I'm going to start it back up here in August at 7.30 on a Saturday morning. If you want to be a part of that men's group, let me know about it. There's another great one that John runs up here. But if you want to be in a men's connect group, love to have you in August. Come up and check me out. Back then, there was a man that came to it. Somebody in the connect group brought somebody to the, to the meeting. This guy was, you know, a big local boy. I mean, just handsome guy. He was, you could tell what is going on here. Just distraught, head down. So I got a, got him alone after the thing, and he goes, my wife left me. I screwed this thing up. He took full response. I screwed up, he said. I've made a mess of my life and my wife's life. I made a mistake. And my wife has kicked me out of the house. And by the way, later I found out she didn't just kick him out of the house. She got her neighbor and her sister to help her while he was at work, literally go into the house and throw everything that he had on the front yard. Everything. Clothes, everything. That's how mad she was. And she instantly filed for divorce. This man was distraught. Like distraught. They had two children, just out of his mind, uh, unconsolable, crying. So, we, of course, we're praying into that. We're, we're talking to him. We're praying over him. One of, the guys, uh, one of the guys that was in the meeting said, hey, I've kind of been there. So he, those two kind of hooked up. And he talked, him in, talked him into, because the wife would not talk. He, he tried every channel, siblings, parents, everybody to try to get her to at least take a phone call from him. No go. No go. In fact, the dad, her dad, told uh, his son, his father-in-law, said, cut bait and run. It's over. You're out. You got to go. Just go on with your life. So my friend, uh, in one of the guys in the connect group says, hey, write her a letter. And he goes, I, I don't write. It's not my thing. I go, he goes, it is right now. I need you to write. I need you to just put your, your heart on that piece of paper. Write it. And then we're going to pray over it. And this Saturday, he had written it. He had sealed it. And we prayed over it. Like literally laid hands on this letter. Literally prayed it. And so he, what he did was he gave it to his brother. That's where he was staying. Gave it to the brother to take it to the wife. So that happened. On Sunday afternoon, I get a call from him, and he is crying again, but I could tell, just faking you out. <laughs> so he calls me on a Sunday afternoon, crying, but these weren't tears of sadness. These were tears of joy, because his wife came over to the house to where he was at, and said, the Lord has told me to forgive you. They are happily married today. They are, we serve a God of the impossible. He wants to do the impossible. So I ask you, what mountain in your life needs to be moved? What in your life do you need to God, for God to show up in a miraculous, powerful way? And do you believe he can do it? True. Let me put you behind the veil. At one point, and especially in this relationship issue, I didn't think it was possible. I thought she was, her heart had gotten so cold towards her husband that it was not possible for her, her heart to soften. I actually didn't believe it could happen. But God did. Do you hear me? 
So I want you to live life. I'm, I want you to know. That, I mean, I'm looking in this room and, and you're looking online right now, all the folks that are watching online, all the people in the courtyard, all of us, there might be something in your life right now you're thinking, God, I need something. I need a miracle. I need you, Lord. And I'm telling you right now, God is the God of miracles. Because here's the thing, it's all God. It's all God. He wants to show himself to you. He wants for you to taste and see that he is good. It says this in, in Matthew 19, it says this, God looked intently at them and it says, humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Back to my favorite verses in Ephesians 20. Listen to this. It says this, when I think of all this, I fall on my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth, and I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his Holy Spirit. What I just read there is nothing's impossible for God. Through his unlimited resources available to you. It says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you come to trust in him. May your roots grow deep down into God's marvelous love. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, and how high and how deep his love really is. And may you experience the love of Christ, though it's too great to fully understand it. And then you'll be made complete in the fullness and the power that comes from God. This is where trust comes in. This is where faith comes in. This is where we build our faith every day. When we take our hands off the steering wheel of our life and say, Lord, you drive this. I'm going to follow you. Your will be done in my life. What's amazing to me is if you understand the word, it says this, that we can pray in his name, that we can pray in his name. That we have authority in his name. We have power in his name. It's not like when we pray. Let me read one scripture for you. It says this. In John 15, 7, it says this. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, you may ask anything you want and it'll be granted. When you produce, you'll produce much fruit and you'll be my true disciple and bring joy to the Father. When it says he'll, you can ask anything in his name, he'll do it. It's when our will, when we abide in him and he abides in us, that means our will and his will are aligned. He's not like a genie where we use his name and all of a sudden we get three wishes. That isn't it at all. But God says we can cause, we can, we can make the impossible happen in, in, in our world by using his name. And it's not that we've done anything. It's that God's done something for us. Amen. It says this, one more scripture. It says this in, in John 15. You didn't choose me, I chose you, and I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will, will give you whatever you ask for in my name. Now, let me be honest here. I know there's some people in this room. I'm looking at Romeo right here. I promise you, I was with him. We prayed for a miracle in his life. I mean, we prayed for a miracle. There's some other people I'm looking in this room, and I know you've lost loved ones, and we prayed that the Lord would heal them. But that wasn't God's will. Now, this isn't just a trite answer. This isn't a good pastor answer. I believe this with all my heart. The word says in John 14, the word says, Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in my Father and also believe in me, Jesus said. For I am going to prepare a place for you. And when everything's ready, I'm going to come and get you. So in, in this case with Romeo here and, and, and those who have lost people, you know, what did, you know what God said one day? Juliet, you're coming home. But here's the miracle. Here's the miracle. I know this man. I know God's working mightily in his life. Here's the miracle. God's picked up Romeo and his children and he carried them through. That's the miracle. Through this. So that they could live a phenomenal life even though they desperately love Juliet. So we're going to lose people in our lives and that's the most painful thing we'll ever experience. And we'll wonder, God, why didn't you answer my prayer? Because it was his will that that person would go to be with the Father. Do I get an Amen. 
So as I close this message, I want to challenge us all and I want to encourage and inspire all of us. Here's what I'd like to do. I'd love you to get in alone, alone with your own thoughts and God. And I would love you to write down the times in your life where you experience God in a miraculous way. In the Old Testament, when they had these encounters with, with God, they actually built an altar to, memor to memorialize when God met with them. And when we write them down in a journal, it's like we're, we're, we're remembering them because when we, when we build our faith and we're building our faith right now in Jesus, when we remember when God showed up, like when I come up that driveway every stinking time, every time, I say, Lord, you are amazing. You're amazing. In fact, let me tell you one thing. And, I, and We leased this land from the Father of the Sacred Heart. We had a 54-year lease on it. Do you know that God blessed the Anchor family beyond our wildest imagination? Because we are now the owners of 9.2 acres of land. We, are, we own it. That's a miracle, gang. I can't tell you, God's got something for us as a church, but he's got something for you. He's, he wants to do something powerful in your life. And this, I'd love you to write these things down. And then I would love to have you this week, just say, Lord, you and me, I'm gonna trust you with everything I have. I'm gonna watch the wonder of you magnify around me to, just to see, because I know God wants to blow your mind. That's the sweetest place to be. Do I get an amen? amen? So this week, just kind of process in your life, what has God done? Because let those be markers when your faith gets tested and all of a sudden you start questioning, oh, nope, I saw God do this here. I know he'll do it again. Amen? amen? So Lord, I pray for this anchor family, this amazing church, this collection of people you brought together for such a time as this, Lord. I pray that you would reveal yourself more and more to all of us every, every day, Lord. Every single day. Every single day, Lord. Lord, I pray that for the people in this room, Lord, that literally need a miracle from you right now. I pray in Jesus' name and the authority of your name. I pray for a miracle, Lord. An intervention supernaturally in their lives right now, Lord. Maybe there's a relationship that is so in disrepair that you, Lord, would need to come in, Lord, and I pray for a miracle in that relationship. Maybe there's a health crisis, Lord. I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit you would heal in Jesus' name. Maybe there's a relationship, a family that's dis disconnected in a, in a terrible way, Lord. Come in, intervene, and cause those hearts to grow towards one another, Lord. Whatever that is, whatever they are, Lord, they need a financial miracle. Whatever that miracle is, Lord, I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, Lord, you would show them how much you love them and do something powerful in their lives. And I also want to pray for anybody in this room who's never come to know Jesus because without knowing Jesus, you, have, you can't pray to him. You can't even experience what we're talking about because you need to have a relationship with Jesus. So I pray for anyone in this room who's never come to know, and I'm looking online right now into the camera, if you're sitting in the, in, the, in the privacy of your own home right now and you know you need to do business with Jesus, hear me. I want you to do it right now. I want you to pray with me. I want you to pray with me. Pray with me. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me for doing my thing my way without you. This very moment, I trust you with my life. Lord, I pray that you'd come in with your Holy Spirit in a powerful way, Lord, a majestic way, a miraculous way, and change them from the inside out. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, if you just prayed with me, normally I have you raise your hand. What I'd like you to do, if you did pray with me, there's a welcome card in that seat back in front of you. I would love you to fill that out. And when the offering basket comes through, just put that in there so we can praise God with you. Is that good? Okay, so what are we going to do this week? We're going to pray that God does some amazing things, that the eyes of the Lord, would, we, the Lord would open our eyes to his wonder. 
Let's pray for the offering. Lord, we, we receive the tithes and offerings, Lord, as a sign of our worship and adoration to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to make a difference, not only in our church family, but in the community around us. In Jesus' name, and we all said, amen.